Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. So here's the lineup for Forbidden Door, because we now have 13 matches for this show. We have show. enough time in this segment for this. Yes, we do, because I'm just going to say words, <laughs> and then we'll talk about them later. It's caliber style. Swerve Strickland. I can't go that fast. Swerve Strickland versus Will Ospreay for the AW title. We've got Takeshita, Mark Briscoe, Jack Perry, Leo Rush, Dante Martin, and a, and a final man who will be announced by the Elite. Isn't that right? Is that this match? No, that's the... Uh, oh, that, that, that's, God, that, Amen. I, I'm, or, uh, I'm dying. Anyway, Owen Hart. there's a TBA for the ladder match for the TNT title. Maybe they are. Who knows? And Mercedes versus Stephanie... Vick that, by the way, is telling. Mercedes Monet versus Stephanie Vacure for the New Japan Strong Women's title and the TBS title. Tony Storm versus Mina Shirakawa for the AW Women's title and the heart of Mariah May. John Moxley versus Naito for the world title, IWGP world title. Brian Danielson versus Shingo in an Owen Hart Foundation men's quarterfinal match. MJF versus Echicero. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Orange Cassidy. The Elite, Okada and the Young Bucks versus Tanahashi and the Acclaimed. And then I don't know what the hell is going on here, but Jericho, Big Bill, and TBA against Samoa Joe, Hook, and Shibata. But Jericho has also been challenged by Suzuki for the FTW title, but that's not announced yet, and I don't think he's working twice, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Stat Lantern, Momo Watanabe versus Willow Nightingale and Tam Nakano. Owen Hart Foundation quarterfinals, Soraya and Mariah May. Mystico and the Lucha Bros versus Titan, Yoda Suji, and Hiromu Takahashi. How can Mariah May be ready? Have you ever held a decent champagne bottle before you can kill somebody with that the well she'll certainly be the underdog baby face won't she oh my lord since she's the underdog baby face in this program mm -mm -mm. Mm. so that is the lineup and we can talk a little bit about the dynamite show when we come back from the break so uh a lot to get into here today stick around back in a moment everybody wrestling observer live Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Do you know that August 17th for Triple Mania, the main event, is a triple threat match for the AAA Tag Team titles? Dr. Wagner Jr. and Galeno Del Mall versus Psycho Clown and Negro Casas versus Jinder Mahal and Satnam Singh. Get out of here. Nope, that's the main oh event. Oh, my God. Jinder Mahal and Satnam Singh for the AAA Tag Team titles. Oh, my. Yes. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, that's that. <laughs> Do you think that actually ends up coming off as uh, scheduled? I don't know why not. Jeff Jarrett's managing him. He'll get him I there. know, but it's AAA. Yeah. I know Jeff Jarrett will show up there. I wonder how filthy he's feeling about Jeff Jarrett right about now. Mm. I want to wish the best to uh, Jim Ross, who uh, hospitalized once again for breathing difficulties. He wrote, another trip to the ER, difficulty breathing, likely an overnight stay. I'll be okay. Let's fight. So uh, best wishes to him. Die Jack is a free agent. It's insane. Revealed his WWE contract set to expire. The company has informed him it will not be renewed. Every now and then there's one of these where it's like, you couldn't figure out what to do with Dijak? Mm. Really? Really? Maybe you could have started by not giving him so many stupid gimmicks. <laughs> Even if he did, who cares? The guy did everything. He carried the ball, everything you handed him. He went with it to the best of his ability, and he's a huge guy that has worked his whole career with smaller guys right down to, who was it? Did he face Leo Rush? in the ROH uh, Futures tournament that they used to have. I mean, he's used to working with smaller guys and younger guys where I can't believe you couldn't find a role for this guy somewhere, even if it was back down in NXT, playing a big badass. He I'm was there. Surprised. He was I there. I know, but then he went up to the Raw roster, and it's like if you're not going to do anything with him there of value – then put him back down in NXT and let him do something there and be a big guy. Well, I think the issue was was he was officially called up a while ago. Remember when he was, uh, who was he? He was, um, what, he had the T -bar. mask on? T-Bar. T-Bar. That's yes. right. Well, once they called him up, he was making main roster money. 
Then they're sending him to NXT, and he's making main roster money for NXT. And he can train, okay? Add some stuff in it that way where he can be a benefit to you. Look, I don't know if he goes to AEW. I'm sure AEW would want to talk to him. I'm sure he's got a lot of friends there, and people see his talent. He can definitely have bangers. But I swear, look, if TNA is going to come off any money right now, this is actually the guy you want to come off the money to because you have no threats to Moose. You have such a thin, limited roster where I'm sure he would rather be in AEW. But if I'm TNA, you got to reach out to this guy because he is one person that's out there that can really, really be of value to you. Tony Khan had a media call. Sounds like not a lot was said. Is there ever? He was asked about Dijak and Becky. said he will not uh, negotiate on a media call. But, you know, he thinks they're both great wrestlers. Movement between groups has been great for both fans and the business. Hmm. Talked about injuries. He claimed... Brit ba- Brit ba- this is the injury thing again. <laughs> Britt Baker's been out with an injury. Could be returning soon. Hmm. How long has she been ready to go for? I think, Possibly, maybe? I think probably quite a while. Yeah. Mentioned Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, and Jimmy Hayter, yeah. who he's excited to get back, bring the company to full strength. Sunday's live gate approaching 1 million and 10,000 tickets sold. It'll be the third time in the event's young history it's hit that financial mark. And then That's good no matter how you cut it. He said he made some football analogies, it says here. Oh, boy, I want you to repeat those. Saying they're in the red them. zone to making their new media rights deal. Oh, yeah. That means that. at any moment... There could be a touchdown or or a fumble. Or like uh, the Seahawks know you could hand it to Marshawn Lynch, but no, pass it and instead get it picked oh, off would you stop? right at the goal line. You realize that was 10 years ago? Oh, I know. My, Come on. my stepfather, a big Seattle Seahawks fan, still uh, has pain. For I'm not me. actually your stepfather, but. No. <laughs> You're looking like it these days. I always Father. love when you tell me that. What? Let's talk about this Dynamite show. I thought it was a pretty good show, actually. But, I mean, I think the one thing... You know, the one thing... Like, it's funny, because you watch every segment. Every segment self-contained is like a good segment. But, I mean, you look at, like, the overall overall thing... There's a lot of show. And it's like, my God, we've got two Owen Hart Cup tournaments going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. We've got qualifying matches for Forbidden Door... Mm-hmm. We've got uh, a well, lot of champions. Yeah, we've got a lot of champions. That's true. But like, we're trying to figure out who's going to be in whose match. There's TBAs everywhere. There's and mystery opponents. The thing for a lot of people out there, and I know AEW fans will say, oh, this isn't true. Look, you know who a lot of these folks are, too. But for a lot, look, did they even like point out that Gabe Kidd was losing his mind on the, the apron? I don't even think they mentioned they his did name, not. did they? No. <laughs> It's a lot. Yes, this is, I mean, I get that it's Forbidden Door season, so like a lot of, of forbidden talent ends up on the show. Forbidden But there's talent. like so much of it. Like, they had that segment at the end, or it <laughs> wasn't at the end. the but, Forbidden Dance one day. Uh, it was the one where, where Naito came out with Moxley, and there's like 35 people in the ring. Oh, yeah. And, and they all dancing. just stood there for a while and <laughs> looked at each other. So MJF did a promo. Do you think that Nitro entrance, like, did any favors? And I get it. If you know who he is and all that stuff, like, yeah, that's what he does. But do you think that that was the right time? He, I know he can't move too fast, but maybe he should have charged down to the ring. I'm pretty sure the presumption is everybody knows these guys, so just, like, I let know, them go out and but, do their gimmicks. I guess. Go ahead. Well, I don't have time to really – Paul Fontaine and I are going to recap this tonight. Vinny's out. But very quickly, MJF did a promo. He offered a match to Daniel Garcia at at Wembley. And then out came Will Ospreay to one-up MJF and offer Daniel a shot at the World and uh, whatever other title he's got. International? Con- no, yeah, continental? International. What, what is it? What is it? It's international. 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 Okada's got the Continental. So he comes out and, and uh, they make that match and... I think at the end of the day, everybody, it is uh, it is going to be Will Ospreay MGF at uh, at Wembley, but we'll see how Daniel Garcia ties into this after he is defeated next week on this show. We had John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Yuta versus Shingo, Hiromu, and Teton, which ended in a DQ when Moxley hit Hiromu with a chair. And I've said before, like I, a DQ every now and then, I don't care, it doesn't bother me. But it was funny because. Of all the matches, 
Titan isn't even on Forbidden Door. No. He's not even on the show. You couldn't pin Titan? No, they could not. They had to protect Titan and everyone else in this match. And then we had the big brawl, and we had Naito and Shingo and Danielson staring him down and the whole nine yards. I thought the match was great. I really liked the match. Jay White and Phoenix, so that was a very good match. Probably not the best match they could have together, but it was very good. Jay White won with the Blade Runner. He's in the semifinals and then got Christian and the Patriarchy staring them down. A heel versus heel program for the trios titles. Matt and Nick have vowed that they have a wild card in the Owen tournament. The Owen tournament. We'll find out who that's going to be. A lot of people think Hangman. I've already given my thoughts on why I don't think it should be Hangman. Acclaimed came out, and that's when they set up the Tanahashi uh, teaming with the Acclaimed, replacing Billy Gunn against uh, against Okada and the Bucks. We had Tony Storm, Mariah May, and Mina Shirakawa beating Anna J, Soraya, and Harley Cameron. And the story here is uh, Mina hits the Mina driver, and you know Mina and Tony have been fighting over Mariah the entire time. Mariah's stuck in the middle. So she ends up getting the champagne. She gives the drink to Tony and Mina. They toast, they drink, and then Tony goes to dance with Mariah by herself. And so Mina tries to hit Tony with the champagne bottle, but she misses and she hits Mariah May. So Mariah May is KO'd, and it looks like she's going into her uh, Owen match injured. I hope they do a full soap opera thing where, oh my God, she's lost her memory now. Poor Mariah May. Actually, you could do that. Oh, yeah. We had a bizarre segment with the Learning Tree we talked about a little bit earlier. I'm still not sure what's going on with Jericho and Minoru Suzuki. Hasn't been made clear. Kyle O'Reilly, Zach Sabre with Orange Cassidy on commentary. This was where uh, Zach gets the win. And then we've got Orange, The Kingdom, Zach, TMDK, Ishii. They all come down, and they all look at each other for a long time. Nobody does anything. And then they hit the music. As Gabe Kidd jumps up and down on the apron. Yes. Didn't mention him, but he was there. Yeah, uh, Will Ospreay and Swerve versus Gates of Agony. I mean, it was a good match. The story was that Will and Swerve, like, sometimes they could work together. Sometimes they had problems. Obviously, they, they got the big win. It still was never actually explained why Will Ospreay and Swerve were booked as a tag team together. It's just like, in storyline, in storyline, the Tony Khan character is a maniac. Is that the and he'll just do boss? whatever that he wants Parejas? to just, just <laughs> cause chaos. And so they get the big win. And the finish is, you know, at one point, and now they've confused everybody because Osprey sets up for what apparently this time actually was the Tiger Driver. But Excalibur had learned his lesson, so he says he's setting up for the Stormbreaker. But then Osprey pauses because he was setting up for the Tiger Driver. But he couldn't bring himself to do it. Well, but then Swerve snaps the arm. He stomps on Toa's arm, and Osprey is shocked. He and recoils Osprey, as Excalibur It's said. the hidden blade for the pin. So the story here is that Osprey is very deeply concerned about hurting anybody, and Swerve does not care. In pro wrestling. And, hey, Brian, uh, check this out. The Lucha Bros are going to team up with Mystico for the first time against... Yoda Suji, Hiromu Takahashi, and Teton. Uh, Teton has made it to the That's show. why we had to protect Teton. There we go. Yeah. And then afterwards, Swerve just murdered, murdered this guy with the house call. It was brutal. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.